Alright, season three, episode twenty-three of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. My name's Jav. Joining me this week, back again on the pod, um, head of the Johannesburg Spurs Supporters Club, Nikki Merritt. Hi, Jav. Hi, Nikki. And back again, Sam Moore from Surrey. Hello, Jav. Hello, everyone. Right. Okay. Hi, Sam. Hello. Um. Just going to jump jump straight into this. So we played Wickham yesterday, um, uh, FA Cup fourth round. Going to go straight into a question from Terry Whitty from Brazil, who asks, "How are we still breathing?" Um, <laughs> I'll come to you in a minute, Sam. Sa- Sam, Sam, and I watched the game together um, at, at White Hart Lane. Um, but I'll start with you, Nikki, first. Um, Nikki, um, I presume it was another. Um, Jansburg Spurs um, supporters club occasion. Yesterday. Yes, yes, it was. And it you're was. not you're not at and the Baron anymore. No, we've we've moved to a new venue, um, which is one of South Africa's iconic restaurants called Mike's Kitchen, and it's in Bryanston, so it's just up the road from where Baron was. But it's a beautiful setting, and everybody that's been there so far has said, you know, it's just amazing and it's lovely. And it's not that we, you know, didn't have a good time at the Baron, and and they were really good to us. I just think that this this venue offers a lot more in terms of our supporters who have children because they've got a children's area with minders and everything. So it's really a place for the whole family to come, and especially the Spurs supporters that can bring their kids, know that they're being looked after while they enjoy watching the game. So it's great, but yeah, yeah, we got we got together yesterday. Um, not as many as as the previous week when we played City, but uh, but still a, a good turnout. And um, you know what? We won. That is all that matters. And we won. <laughs> have you managed to catch up? And are, are you still breathing? Have you recovered after yesterday's um, exciting <laughs> topsy turvy match? Yeah, it was a roller coaster ride of notes, I tell you that. But um but you know what? I uh at the end of the day I think we all agreed when we left there. Um no points in dwelling on coulda, woulda, shoulda. We won. And and for me that's that's the main thing. You know, I'm not gonna criticize. I was a bit irritated with Pochettino, but um but hey ho, we won. That's all. <laughs> Sam, Although, sorry, you, sorry, can I quickly say something? Sorry, Nicky, go on. Why, why, um, why did rugby players turn up to play against us? I didn't get that, though. This would be <laughs> um, huge. Um, uh, Akin Fayer, or, or, or just generally the West, the, the West Brom, the Wickham team? The Wickham team were large. I mean, I don't know. I, I know that we're going to become an NFL NFL. Um, pitch in in the new stadium but but I didn't expect the players to arrive so early <laughs> it's crazy they were huge huge do you know it, it's funny but um before I come to you, Sam it's, it's funny you should mention that because I, I I read that elsewhere on social social media as well yesterday and I, I hadn't really noticed um at the time I, I'm 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 now I'm quite intrigued I'm gonna <laughs> watch watch the highlights again um Sam recovered from yesterday um, yeah, I have um, mentally recovered. I'm not sure my voice has yet, as you can probably tell. But yeah, just about. <laughs> <laughs> now, How was it at the lane, guys? How was the atmosphere? I thought it was good. In the whole, we were sat, <clears throat> excuse me, in close proximity to the away fans, which I find helps generate a bit of atmosphere. But yeah, I mean, my son and I, we, we did our bit trying to get the crowd going, and it was fairly buoyant in the park lane, I thought. It was um, it was good, yeah. You know, apart from sort of the the big league games that we've played this season, like Chelsea at home or Man City at home, which are going to be 
special occasions. Generally, the atmosphere at White Hart Lane this season hasn't been good with the reduced capacity and the way that um, seats are allocated um, or tickets are, have been allocated this season under the ballot system. But for yesterday, um, FA Cup, Cup tie, was, the atmosphere was really, really, really good. Really good. Um, I, I don't know if that came across on, on, on TV, but it, it, it uh, yeah, I, I've been there a few, a few times this season and, and I thought the atmosphere was really good. Um, a question from John Steggles. Was the result a surprise given the Man City comeback? Now, it's funny, Nicky, I, I kept turning around early in the first half when we when we were to, um, two nil down. Um, I said to Sam, "You know, we we can we can get back into this game. We 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 can do it." Second half, um, you know, City last week we 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 managed to do it then. So I I was always fairly confident um, that we would come back into the match, but I don't know how um, you both felt. Um, was it a surprise mm. or? Well, you know, I suppose I think the thing for me was um, one thing to take into consideration was that these players don't play together every day. They really don't. And and that's something to maybe think about. Um, so perhaps perhaps some would, would assume, and, and I suppose I did think it for a minute that um, Pochettino underestimated especially talking about how they were going to come there and play like it was cup final because it would be such a big game for them. But at no stage did I think that um, that we would lose. Let's put it that way. I, I thought we would come back and at least have a draw. And um, But when they scored that third goal, I will be honest, it, it was just like somebody stabbed me through the heart. I was like, oh my word, you've got to be kidding me. So it's... It, it, that was a bit heart wrenching, I must be honest. And then, of course, when we, when we, when Sunny just came along and oh, got that winner for us, we went absolutely berserk, as I'm sure everybody did at White Hart Lane. It was insane, <laughs> bloody exciting, if you ask me. Sam, um, was it a surprise? Um, not under this manager. I think the way that we are now is we've got a never-say-die attitude. That's the one thing I could, positive that I could take out of yesterday. Um, it's something that's not born of one result. It's a philosophy that Pochettino's got, um, which has sort of manifested itself at the club, which had been lacking for far too long before he arrived. Mm. So was it a surprise? No, and he also yes at the same time, because during the game, I was saying to Jav at a certain point, I couldn't see us getting back into it, particularly in the 87th minute when we were 3-2 down. Uh, it didn't look great, but then that never say die spirit manifested itself. And, you know, we were fortunate to have a player like Delhi as an in- impact substitute came on. And uh, he did just that. He made an impact. He scored the equaliser. And once we'd got that equaliser, I then felt that there was only one side that was going to go on to win it. It's funny for me at two 0 down in the first half. I always thought would 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 come back into it, and 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 when it was two all, I think the substitutions that Pochettino made in the second half, particularly Janssen, because I think he gave us a focal point up front that we were missing in the first half. Um, Son is a good player, but I don't see him as a as a striker, somebody that can be that focal point. I, I think he's better coming from a deeper position or from from, from wide position. So I thought Janssen's substitution was 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 a was a good move and then obviously um uh Deli Ali and, and, and Dembele add a bit of stardust and and and, and uh, take us to that next level when they came on and and at two all I really thought I turned around to Sam I said there's only there's only gonna be one winner and I thought it was going to be four two. Um and and then it was three two and I, I must admit a bit like yourself, Nikki, I think at three two and the Sam at three two I thought ooh that that particularly as it felt we had some momentum. Um and I thought, oh no. When the, when we equal when, when Dele Ali got the equalizer, the next thought that was going through all the only thought that was going through my mind at that point, even when it when um the the uh, fourth official put the um uh, indicated there were six minutes of added time to be played. I, all, the only thing that kept going through my mind was replay, replay, and I didn't want a replay. I was like, when's the replay going to be? And I kept 
I turned to Sam and I was like, so I think the replay is going to be on the, I think it was the the eighth, seventh or the eighth of February. Anyway, it would have been the I, it would have been either either on the Tuesday or the Wednesday before before the Liverpool match. And I was like, that's the last thing we need. And that was that's the only thing that was going through my mind at that point. So for 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 some to get that winner right at the end was just it, yeah, Ooh. it was we we were just. I mean, it was me, Sam, um, Sam's son, Harry, celebrating, and then however many, two or three strangers around us, and we were <laughs> jumping up and down, and I've still got bruises from um, and cuts from last week at, at Man City, um, which are just about getting over, and then I've now got a few more. But I don't think... I've never been to a game live quite like that match in terms of... Just it being that roller roller coaster of emotions. Um, it was just that amazing. was the archetypal FA Cup tie. Yeah, it had everything. It was thrills. It was spills. It had a plucky underdog. You know, bringing out all the cliches here, but it, it was if you <laughs> it could encapsulate the FA Cup, that was yesterday's game, which is why so many people love it. Uh, question from Greg Taylor: Nikki, did you spill your glass of wine when Wickham scored their third goal, or was it the whole bottle? No, Greg, I actually choked on my tequila that I had ordered <laughs> for the entire group of supporters that were there because we were all so so down and I'm like, I've got to, I've got to pick everybody up because we were just, the, you know, it's so hard to, to keep people interested to come and support Spurs day a week in and week out. And it's not because they fair weather, it's just I think because we don't have – what you guys have in the UK where you where you go into White Hart Lane and it's it's you're kind of born with that, you know. With us, um, people don't mind watching it at home because they've done it for so many years. So for me it's just I was like, oh my God, how am I going to keep people interested in coming to join us and, and whatever the case may be. So I just ordered te- te- tequilas all around and um, as we were drinking them I said, guys, I want more goals, so drink your tequila. And yeah, I nearly choked on mine, but it it was good mm-hmm. all the same. <laughs> and then, sorry, sorry. And then there were about four tequilas because a couple of the people were driving and they didn't want to have tequila. And I grabbed them and quickly took it to the usual crew who um, do enjoy their drinks. And I said, "Quick, quick, drink it!" And literally, it was it was in the last minute. I said, "Drink up! I need another goal. I need us to win this." And literally, as they had just finished drinking the tequila, Sunny scored. It was amazing. So I think everybody's thinking or expecting me to buy tequilas every week. Not happening, boys. Not happening. <laughs> anyway, well, it was good. <laughs> one of the things that Nikki mentioned at the outset was um, the fact that we're through. And that's the main thing. Uh, absolutely. We're, we're through to the next round. Um, there isn't a replay either, so we don't have an extra fixture. And, and that, that's the most important thing. And I, and I, don't, and I don't want the, the podcast to become like a post-mortem on, on all the bad things. However, there are one or two things I think we should we should discuss. Um, something you also mentioned was the fact that we played a weakened team. Um, how much of a factor... Well, t- two questions. One, how much of a factor do you think that was? Um, and also, bringing in a question from a listener from Nick Seal... Um, do, you, do either of you think that Poch really gets the importance of the FA Cup um, to our club? I'd imagine Poch does, purely because he would have been sort of growing up around the time that Ricky and Ozzy joined the club. So in Argentina, that would have attracted a lot of interest, mm. um, if nothing else. And the FA Cup then was probably a lot more, a lot more of a big deal, should we say, than what it's considered to be now. So I think Poch definitely gets it, but I think the fact that he played such a rejig team did play a part in our blow path performance. But that said, I was talking to Guy Jinks after the game, and he made a very valid point. He said these players will have trained together in the run-up to the game. They're professional athletes. They should be playing better than this. Yeah. And I had to concur with that opinion. I suppose, I suppose, but... But, at, you know, I think individually they all bring something to the table. Uh, the fact that they don't play together uh, very often obviously is a factor, I think. But um, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're a weakened team, I think, or weakened side. I just think that they probably don't read each other um, as well as as 
let's be honest, the first team do because they they instinctively kind of know what you know what the next one what the next guy is going to do. They, they they you get to already read their mind almost. And I I hear what guys saying, and I, and I mean I know that he he's coached and he's played and all the rest of it. But I just think that there's also an element of these guys don't. It's a, it's a, it's a big deal. They know that all eyes are on them. Um, there's a lot of pressure. Yes, they're professional athletes and they should be able to cope. But if you're not used to playing with each other all the time, and and let's be honest, Wickham came out guns blazing. Um, I think they were taken aback a little bit. They 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 were a bit headless. They, I think they panicked a little bit. No. It's... But having said that. They still did okay. It could have been a lot worse. Hmm. Uh, no, yeah. ab- ab- absolutely. I think I think the word I'm looking for disjointed. I think I think if you if you don't play yeah. regu- regularly, yeah. then of course it's going to have an impact. Um, the only thing I would say is, oh, on paper, we've got the better players, and for some of, some of the players that came in yesterday, that might be a, one of the only few opportunities they get over the course of the season. And it's just important, you know, whether it's Wickham yesterday or it might be another cup game in the next round. It's just important those players take those opportunities because they're going to be few and far between. Um, and it was frustrating that maybe some of our players underperformed. I was really impressed with Winks again. Um, I think he's he's yeah. a really good player. Um, but some of the other players, I was I was frustrated with um, Sissoko. Um, <sighs> I'm not a big fan of Nkundu. I know he hasn't played very much. Um, I just feel that he's got a lot of pace. He's got a lot of skill. But at the moment, there's no end product. But he hasn't played hardly at all. I thought Carter Vickers looked really nervous yesterday. Um, but the, but then, you know, as, players need to play. They need to play regularly. They need to play together. Not everybody... Jumps in and takes that opportunity and and makes an impact straight away. Some players need to need to be given given that given that time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to get too. Also, sorry. 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 Okay. I think maybe some are just also over eager and and mm-hmm. that over eagerness just becomes the death of them. Like like Onima, I love I love Josh, but I just think that he's so eager. That it just doesn't translate well in his game, and and he makes stupid errors as a result. Anyway, what are we going to say, Ben? I was going to say I don't want to get too down on them because, as you say, there are a lot of young players there. There were a couple of causes of concern for me. Vaughn again didn't take his chance for me. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of the guy, but I don't want to go into it and get down on it because, as you said, there's danger of it becoming a bit of a post mortem. Um, suffice to say, I've aired my opinions on that, but the encouraging things to take out of it. As you say, people like Winks, who never gave up, even in the dire situations that we were in at times in the game. Being 2-0 down, his head didn't drop. He was there. He was asking for the ball. He wasn't shirking. He wasn't hiding. He was one trying to make things happen, which is something you'd expect some of the more senior pros, the likes of Sissoko, to do. But, hey, if they're not doing it, somebody's got to. And that was the, one of the encouraging things I took out of it. Mm. I think Trippier had a good game. He, he put in some lovely passes. He did, yeah, he 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 did. But I, I on just on that, I, I was really frustrated. First half, he was putting some really good balls in the box, and I couldn't help but think, if no, only Janssen, yeah, if only Janssen had been selected and started the match, he those some of the balls that Trippier yeah. put in would have would have were made for Janssen. But yeah, yeah, we said that in the game yesterday, didn't we? There were chances there, begging. You know full well if Harry Kane had been on that pitch, he'd have helped himself in that first half. Hmm. Yeah. The other but, positive uh, take out of it on that note is Harry Kane got a rest. So did Ericsson. Um, you know, so did um, Hugo Lloris. Um, Carl Toby. Walker. There's, you know, there's a lot of people who, yeah, Danny Rose, Kyle Walker, all those guys got rested. We're through to the fifth round and we've got Sunderland up next. So that was a vital game for them to have off in that sense to recuperate. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we've got. Um... A midweek game, Sunderland, and then Middlesbrough after that, which, which we'll come to in a minute. Um, but one of the things I was reading a lot on social media yesterday, and not just 
yesterday, but even earlier this season when we played, I think it was Monaco away. Um, and it's the, why does Pochettino rest players? Why doesn't he take these competitions seriously? Why does he make so many changes? Now, I'm of the opinion that... Um, I don't want to go back to the Champions League games, but if we must, um, I think we, we were poor in the Champions League and I think we, we went out because of the two home matches. We, we we lost our two home games and I think that that's what cost us. Um, not not his team selection against Monaco later on, later on in the tournament. And yesterday, I think that... Um, I think Pochettino is damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. If he plays, if he plays a weakened team and we, do, we, we, we don't play well, everybody's going to say, why didn't he play... Why didn't he start Dembele? Why didn't he start um, Deli Alli? If he plays those individuals and they pick up an injury, and I know they could pick up an injury in the middle of the week in a league match, but if they pick up an injury or they play and then later in the season they look a bit tired and a little bit jaded, the same fans would be saying, but we should have rested them because it was, it was only mm. Wickham. So I, I think he's trying to juggle... That and also you've got to bear in mind we've got a squad, a, you know, what is it, a twenty twenty-five man squad, and he's got to keep players. I know ultimately the most important thing is is club, uh, the the team, and the results, but he's also got to manage these players. And for example, someone like Janssen, if he's not on the bench or Trippier, if they're, sorry, if they're, or Trippier, if they're not playing, they're going to be frustrated. They're going to possibly want to move away. So he's also got to play these players in, in these matches um, so I think it's I don't know I just feel it's it's easy to be critical um, when the result doesn't go our way and to say well he should have played this player I, I still think with the players we had yesterday the ones that started um, uh, yeah, Pochettino believed in them. He picked that team because he believed that team was going to go and go and win. Maybe, maybe they're not up to it. Maybe some of them aren't up to it. Time will tell. But um, I think I, I, I back his judgment. Um, he knows best. You know, it was interesting in the first half when we were two down. Um, I didn't see him. He he was in his seat. He was chatting to to Jesus, and um, you know, he wasn't. He wasn't doing very much. It's almost like, I don't know, like he, he like he knew that we were going to come back because of the substitutions that he would, he would make. It's like he was he was sitting back and watching and analysing and, and almost determining, you know, um, who's who's making the most of the opportunity, you know, who's weak, where the gaps are, what he needs to do in order to strengthen the team, in order to turn the, the game around. That's what it looked like to me. He he only then got involved really in the second half, and he was on the on the sidelines, and he was doing what Pochettino does. It, it, it was very strange. I don't know if you guys noticed that at all, but he was very calm in the first half. It was almost like, well, you know, let's see what happens, kind of thing. Uh, who knows? It's not yeah. something that I immediately noticed in the game, but that said, so we weren't very close to where Poch was at all, so we didn't have much of a advantage point to sort of see how animated he was or wasn't, but. That is a part of Pochettino. You know, he is very analytical, and that's what makes him such a good manager because he does stand back and think, right, this needs fixing, that needs fixing. And one of the things I've noticed with Poch is that he'll notice mistakes that we've made. And a prime example of this is when we played Chelsea, and then he'll rectify those mistakes the next time we play them. So he did it against Chelsea. Um, obviously, we had um, Danny Rose suspended, I think, for that game, and I think he played Vimmer on the left. And then he noticed that it didn't quite work and their winning goal came down that side, I think. And then so the next time he played them, he changed formation. And he goes, like for like. And hey, hey, presto, it works. So, yeah, yeah, that is a part of Pochettino's game. He is quite um, analytical. I, I think he... Yeah, I think Nicky, I think he, he, he's sort of very measured. I don't, I don't think he's... Even at 2-0 down, I think as fans, we've got a tendency to think, oh, shit, that's it. it, it it's, we're not going to come back into it. I think he's, he's fairly relaxed about it. He's like, well, you know, there's another hour or so of the match to play. We're good enough. On paper, we're better. We've got players like Delhi and, and Musa who can come off the bench. So I think he's... Plus, we've got the fitness levels that everyone knows about about us, that, that even in the, in, in the Premier League, are, 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 are up there, but let alone against um, a side... Um, from the lower leagues, um, that he knows that we can we can keep on going. So it, it's 
um, it's very much a, a marath- um, marathon rather than a sprint with him. Um, just on that, we had a question from David Phipps who, who says, why do we keep giving teams a lead before we start playing? Do you think this never say die attitude stems from the Chelsea game of last season? That I presume you mean the battle of the bridge. Um, who knows why we keep giving them a lead? It's not saying the players will be sort of doing on purpose, if you like, is it? You know, no athlete wants to do that. But, you know, the the other side, the flip side of that coin is that we don't let our heads drop. You know, yes, we've been 2 0 down to the team, we've come back and got a draw. Frankly, we almost, by daylight robbery last week, the amount of chances they had. But, hey, you've got to make your own luck, haven't you? Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's the other way to look at it. Yeah, it's disappointing that we're giving these leads away, but don't forget we've got Jan Vertonghen now, and that he is a crucial part of our defence at the moment. Him and Toby, the way they interlink, um, yeah. you know, it's vital. They're absolutely vital to our defence. You know, any player would miss, uh, sorry, any team would miss a player of that quality. So that's my take mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. I also think that, um, like, like Sam said, I don't think we do it intentionally. I think maybe, maybe sometimes. Um, in the first half, we tend to just absorb a lot. We kind of let them do their runs, tire them out a little bit, and then come in the second half and bam, <laughs> you know, um, just go at them. And um, or, or that's what it seems like. So, so sometimes they have an opportunity to obviously score a goal, and we go down in the first half. But we we tend to come back fighting and. I mean, years gone by, that would have never happened. I mean, if we had been 2 0 down, that would have been it. We probably would have ended up losing 5 0. Yeah, and that's, that's not the team that we've got now because that's not, that's not the morale at the, at the club and that's not what Pochettino stands for. So, so um, the fact that we do come fighting, come back fighting, is, is great testament to our players and, and, our, and our coach and, and Pochettino. But, uh, but I don't think it's intentional at all. No. I think it maybe just highlights where something's missing or something's lacking. And uh, Pochettino gives them a little bit of a clip across the ears at half time and then uh, they come out and they know what they've got to do, maybe. I don't know. And to be fair, it's a little bit disingenuous to say, why do we keep doing this? It's happened twice. Mm. It's yes. just it's happened yes. twice yes. In, in successive yeah. weeks. You, yes. Just on, you mentioned Jan Vertonghen. If we go back to lo- this time last season when, when Jan also got injured and we had Vimmer and, I know we were playing with a bat four then, and we had Vimmer and Toby, um, that partnership worked really well. Um, I haven't got any stats in front of me, but I'm pretty sure right at the beginning of that, t- Vimmer was a little bit shaky and as a pair, they weren't, they were still um, working out each other's game. Um, now, eventually it went on mm-hmm. to be. Um, Vimmer did a really good good job as, as I think someone else on the podcast maybe last week or the week before said that to the point where when Jan was about to come back from, from his injury a few people were saying oh will he get back in the team because Vimmer's played so well so I think we've got to bear in mind that y- yes Jan is out that's going to be a blow but it takes a bit of time for us to um, adjust and cope with that um, and the, the result. I think you alluded, sorry to interrupt, I was going to say why I've got it in my head, you alluded to it earlier about players needing time, and Vimmer is a classic case in point. Absolutely, but and, and but, but but the short-term result of that is going to be, we, we, we might concede a few goals initially, I think long-term, when he, um, when he forges that understanding once again with with Toby, or if it's back three with Toby and Dyer, um, and he starts getting those games, then we won't concede those concede those goals. I don't. I don't think it's anything. I don't think we 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 don't make a habit of gifting that to opposition teams. Um, the the never say die attitude. I think that's yeah, definitely Nikki. That's definitely something that's that our manager has brought into into the team right from day one, um, and that's just developed over time, and it's just improved, and he's he's brought a mental. Um, uh, mental toughness to the team. I was reading an article um, uh, at the weekend in the Guardian, and it was all about Harry Winks. Um, but it mentioned, it referred to Pochettino and the fact that there are two things that are very important um, that Pochettino regards in a player. One is um, fitness levels, but also mental strength. Um, and I think that that 
is something that we've got. As for the Chelsea game last season, I don't know, but I wonder if it did play on the, it played on the psyche of the players. I wonder if that experience has they've come back and they're still very young men. We've still got very young, young, young the younger squad, youngest team in, in average in the Premier League. Whether they've come back from that, thinking, do you know what? We're not gonna we're not gonna allow any team to to come back at um, back at us. Um, and we're going to hold on to a lead. And if we are behind, we're going to come back and fight back like we did, um, for example, last week against against um, Chelsea. So I think, sorry, against Man City. So I think, yeah, some of it is definitely Pochettino, but some of it is just experience and our players going through certain experiences, not always good experiences, like like the the game against Chelsea last season, and then coming coming out of it tougher and better equipped. Mm. Um, just before we move on to the next two games, um, uh, you mentioned earlier about the um, the size of the players. So, what what are the um, uh, more hilarious moments in in, in the match? Was um, the Spurs fans were singing um, at um, Wickham's Addy Bio Akin Fem. Wow, this is going to be another Ben's lab. Um, Akin Femwa, <laughs> um, where we're singing, you're just a fat Emil Heskey, you're just a fat Emil Heskey, which was a bit cruel, um, but it's quite amusing. Um, so he's born in, he's two years younger than me, he's born in, born 10th of May 1982. In fact, he's your age, Sam, 34 years yeah. old. Height 180, what's that? 180 is 5'11, I think. Weight one hundred and two yeah, no, hundred and two kilograms. How how on earth is he a professional footballer? He doesn't look like one. He he just he defies everything an athlete should be. I mean, fair play to him that he's he's playing um, at the level that he's playing. But I, 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 it's well, one thing that we noticed yesterday, didn't we? Is that yes, inevitably he was going to win things in the air. But as soon as he had to run, that was him cooked. His, his race was run. As soon as he had to go and run for, for anything, that was it. He knew that we were mopping up at the back, and it happened countless times. He'd, he'd win the initial flick on, but if he didn't go where he wanted it to go, that was him done, because he effectively couldn't move. He's like a wardrobe on wheels. <laughs> but those guys, some of them were really, really... I mean, they're, they're, they looked... Even, even the kit looked like something out of a rugby... A, a rugby jersey or something. Oh, it was their just goalkeeper's bizarre. kit was horrific. Like it some sort of cocktail horrible. gone wrong. Yeah, well, he looked like a referee from the rugby tournaments. I mean, it, it was just, it was just bizarre <laughs> seeing some of these guys. I mean, they were quite a bit older and larger, and and even you know, even their hands all over. Who was it? Was it Deli Ali or Dembele? Um, where, where the one was guy was Dembele. Dembele, Dembele yeah. yeah. How he even had a jersey on after that guy was, you know, grappling him. I thought, good God, you know, keep your hands off him. I'm sure he's not interested. <laughs> it was insane. It was crazy. They, they honestly thought they were playing rugby, not football. Um, it was weird. The other thing, just something just just remembered, the referee, another referee that this this season, which is absolutely shocking. Um I didn't think the the penalty. Um, looking at it in, in real time, I think neither neither me or Sam felt that it was a penalty. That the the one against us, I think Carter Vickers got the ball. Um, but there were lots of other decisions that he got completely wrong. Mm, well, Jansen he got his legs taken out in the taken out in the area. He didn't give that, and then he gave one for something that seemed um, a much milder offence. I was quite perplexed by that. But yeah, every, it seemed like every big decision that he he had to make, he got wrong. But you know, who knows? That could just be me being partisan. But it is weird. It's 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 happening more and more, though. Yeah. I mean, these referees are supposed to be professional, and I just find that many of them are not impartial, and and get decisions wrong all the time. And it's weird because you know, don't they have the linesman there to consult with? In order, I know it's a fast-moving game and you've got to make a snap decision. But, but the the thing about linesmen is they're supposed to be assistant referees. When was the last time you saw a linesman or one assist a referee? Mm. No, well, exactly. It's, it's just the, the, the inconsistency of it all is a frustrating thing. I, I accept they're human beings. I accept they are in 
that they that they'll they'll, um, they'll mistake they'll, they'll make mistakes. Um, but it's just this season it just seems so much more, um, and it's just so inconsistent. Um, right, the other thing we should mention: Ryan Mason. So last week when when we were recording the pod, um, uh, we were recording it set around about the same time that Chelsea played Hull, and I remember Beck saying on on the recording that um, Ryan Mason had, had been taken away um, with a. Uh, sustained a serious injury head collision so um, there were some initial media reports I remember that evening um, which were f- clearly false um, uh, the the Daily Mirror had suggested newspaper had suggested that, that Mason was fighting for his life um, it wasn't that serious um, or that it wasn't life threatening but certainly it was a very serious injury and fortunately f- f- fortunately um, the next day on the Monday um, it was confirmed that he was speaking and he was up and, and, and well but um, he's he's not in a good way, um, and our thoughts are obviously with him um, and his family, and, and hopefully he will he will make a, a, a recovery, um, a steadfast recovery. It was nice that Pochettino um, saw him earlier in the week. Um, you know mm-hmm. that that was that was that was nice to, to see an ex ex player um, at half time. Nicky, um, they had. Um, the half-time guess, which I, I, is probably one of the bits that I don't enjoy about what, about going to White Lane. Is at half-time, there's always they'll bring on some guests, some ex-pros, and there'll be like a little competition where it'll be involve a little little boy kicking a ball in the back of the net or something like that. It, it, generally, the half-time entertainment doesn't really do it for me. But they had um, Alan Gilzine and Mickey Hazard, former players, and they're interviewing them. And right towards the end, um, um, Paul Coit's, um was um, was talking to Mickey Hazard about Ryan Mason, and Mickey Hazard mentioned that he was going to go and see um, Ryan Mason um, in the hospital on on Sunday. He hadn't done so far, but because he just wanted to give him time and, and so forth. And then um, Mickey Hazard got his phone out and started filming um, the. Um, the crowd who were starting to clap and then singing he's one of our own Ryan Mason he's one of our own and the, the, I've probably, it was very touching but I was quite quite moved by that um, it was, a, it was well, a, I'm, I'm actually tearing up as you're telling me shame um, the, thing of the, the video is I haven't watched it subsequently but there is a video if you go on the Tottenham Hotspur on the, on the Tottenham Facebook Page, I think they've posted something probably on Twitter as well and, and elsewhere on the on the on the official Tottenham page. Um, that that, that footage. Um, so that that was a nice Thanks, touch. Dad. Yeah, well, I think we. Uh, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, our thoughts are with you, Ryan. Get well soon. Without a doubt, it'll always be one of our. I mean, you know, he he needed game time. It's it's just one of those things, and. Um, Maybe he didn't fit into Pochettino's plans, but that doesn't mean that that um, that he's not special. And every time I, uh, I hear the name Ryan Mason, I think of our dear Mary, who absolutely adored him. So, um, so I think Ryan Mason, for that reason, especially because she loved him so much, holds a very special place in my heart. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so going into. Um, the next few games Sunderland on Tuesday and then Middlesbrough on Saturday before I come into previews or previewing those games and, 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 and getting predictions from you both just just leading into that question from David Fornell do we think that the Premier League fixture list is a big factor on Poch's team selection might he have put out a stronger side if the next fixture was at the weekend instead of Tuesday <laughs> Ooh, well, possibly. Um, there was some team talk saying that Harry Kane's possibly had a bit of fatigue in his groin. If you'll uh, pardon the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the expression. Um, Sorry. <laughs> but that's apparently why he missed yesterday's game. But even a part of me thinks, is that Poch being Poch being clever, giving Harry a rest because he's just had a new baby and what have you. Um, so who knows? It's one of those things that only Pochettino will know. He possibly could have done, but... All said and done, the manager's done his job, hasn't he? He's got us out of there with the win, and we're through to the next round. Yeah, 
I, I, I can't add more to that. I think I think uh, Sam's nailed it on the head. Okay. Um, so these back, back, back to back games. Sunderland away. Um, they're struggling. Middlesbrough. They're struggling. And that's at home, and and it's become White Hart Lane has become a bit of a fortress for us this season. Um, do either of you see anything other than six points from these two matches? Well, you just know it's written in the stars that Defoe will score against us. So I don't. Mm. Although we may win both games, um, I don't think it'll be a cakewalk. Put it that way. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think I think we have to keep Defoe quiet. He is definitely the danger man, and. Uh, and of course, we go into Sunderland, and and guys, I say this all the time: never underestimate your opponents. I don't care who it is. I don't care yeah, if they if they've lost and maybe drawn a game here or there, or they've lost five, six games on the trot. It actually doesn't matter for me. It makes them even more dangerous because they're fighting relegation. They want to get as many points as they can, so they will try and find whatever hole they can. And and if Toby doesn't play, we are vulnerable at the back. I mean, we know that Jaren isn't playing, but if Toby doesn't play, we are vulnerable. So so the key is to keep Defoe quiet. We need Toby. Um, and uh, I do see six points, I will be honest, but I don't think it's going to be a walk in the park. Um, we've got to remember that these guys are fighting and uh, and I think they'll they'll do what they can. They'll, they'll take their chances where they can. We can't un- underestimate them. Um, although for most of this season, I've been overall optimistic and I've said that we're going to win the league and I keep saying it. When it comes to individual games, I've generally, generally been a bit cautious. Um, but I'm, I'm going to say for these two, I'm going to say we're going to get six points and I'm really going to stick my head out. I hope I hope this doesn't come back to bite me. I think we're going to get six goals. I think we're going to we're going to win both matches three 0 and I think Defoe will put the ball in the back of the net against us, but it'll be offside. Um, <laughs> I don't think has, has he has he scored since since he's. Um, I know when he was at Portsmouth, he he did score against us, but since. We sold him the second time round since he's been at Sunderland. I'm not sure that he has scored against us. Let's, let's not tempt fate here, Jeff. Let's not go down yeah, that let's, road. Let's move, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> right. Um, before, before we go through more listeners' questions, here's Bex with this week's Spurs Ladies update. Hello, people. It's Bex. Just to let you know that the square root of nothing has been going on in the world of Spurs Ladies this week. They had their midweek semi final Boo Avenue Cup rescheduled for. Wednesday, which was yet again called off because of a frozen pitch. Their game this weekend against Cardiff again at Chesham was called off because it the pitch is absolutely unplayable. It's um yeah, it's really not nice if you've seen any pics on social media. So as I don't have anything formal to tell you, um I thought I'd just give you a quick update to explain how the ladies' leagues work. A couple of people have asked me why aren't we hearing Spurs ladies in the same breath as Chelsea, Arsenal, etc. And that's because of the way the league is structured. So the Women's Super League 1, which is Man City, the Gooners, the Chavskis, etc. That's Women's Super League 1. You'll see some of those games on BT Sport, for example. um, And that season kicks off in April. Underneath that, so that's equivalent to the Premier League, if you like. Underneath that, you have WSL 2, and that's equivalent to the Championship. Spurs ladies play in the next league down from that, which is split between the Premier League North and South. And obviously, being in London, they play in the Southern League. So it's kind of an equivalent to League One, but not quite because it's not a direct match, if you like, for the way the lads' leagues work. But I thought if I at least give you a heads up, then nobody can whinge at me in future when I don't happen to mention the bigger clubs. So for things like the FA Cup, exactly the same in the girls' game as it is in the blokes. You don't know who you're going to get paired up with next. So it's a really good opportunity for Spurs ladies to play against some of the bigger names in and around women's football. Last year, they ran Aston Villa a really close game, um, only losing 2-1, I think it was, in the end. And Villa play in the WSL 1, uh, sorry, 2. So, again, it was a league above them. They had a really good time, and it was really good for them to learn from that experience. As for upcoming games, well, they currently, because of the pitch situation, they currently have this build-up of games going on. So they have their game against Cardiff, a game against Charlton in the league, both to play, and they still have the rescheduled um, Boo Avenue semi-final to be rescheduled. 
So the next scheduled game is for next Sunday, the 5th of February. That's to Blackburn Rovers, and it's away at the Sir Tom Finney Stadium, which I presume is somewhere up north. I don't get north. Uh, that's a one o'clock kickoff, and that's the FA Cup third round. Blackburn Rovers ladies play in the Premier League North, so the equivalent just up north. Apologies for any northerners, I've probably screwed that up because I'm a southerner. But I am expecting the fixture list to change slightly to accommodate uh, the missing games. As usual, if anybody has any burning questions or any reason to contact me, I am on Twitter at Bunches Bex or via THF Podcast or the Tottenham Hotspur Family Facebook page. Cheers, thanks, bye-bye. Welcome back to the second half of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast. Right, um, just a few announcements just very quickly. Um, uh, as mentioned last week on, on, on the pod, um, looking to get folks to write um, some articles for the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast website. Um, particularly, I'm looking for um, articles around memories of, of the lane, um, your personal memories. Um, it could be a match, it could be a moment, something that something that means um, something about about White Hart Lane, about like, your experience of going to the lane that, 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 that and why it's so special for you. Um, I'm particularly looking for, for, for articles around that. We had a very good article earlier this season from Ali Hassan um, around what White Hart Lane meant to him. So if you've got a if you've got experiences, um, moments that you want to share with us and you fancy yourself as a scribe, then get writing and we'll look to publish the publish your article on the website. Um, we've also got a YouTube channel. You can go on there and if you search for Tom Watson for Family Podcast and YouTube, you'll see all of the previous um, podcast episodes over series one, two and three and also fan, fan footage um, from... From, from matches there um, and as ever if you want to send us any questions um, to the pod you can do so via Twitter the Twitter handle is at CHF podcast you can do so via the Tottenham Hotspur Family podcast Facebook page um, and via email spurs at the Tottenham Hotspur Family podcast dot com right um, let's finish off with some questions more, some more questions David Fornell how would you feel about Poch if he had pushed the fourth official as Wenger did recently. Potch would never do that. He's got class. Move on. Next question. That is, tr- that is true. <laughs> um, yeah, he's got too much class. There was a moment, just talking of um, uh, pushing, um, there was a moment yesterday when Harry Winks pushed one of their, one of the Wickham players um, I think it, the, the the player in question was giving him a bit of a tough time, and and I think he might have been grabbing a shirt or something like that. And Winks, he, it was very uncharacteristic of, of, of Winks, <laughs> Winks just pushed him um, and and got a, got a yellow card. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't, I I couldn't foresee a situation whereby um, Maurizio Pochettino would do that, and if he did, he would have to be provoked to some. To quite some level for him to to do that as as, as a manager. I think the, the way he, that he conducts himself, um, he uh, he's, he represents the club, um, and um, he, he's he, I, I just couldn't, couldn't envisage it for a moment. Um, Ed Brad, do you wonder if fans around my age, um, Ed Brad is thirty something, um, hold the domestic trophies in higher regard? as English clubs were banned from Europe when we fully got into football. So, yeah, I mean, do, do it seems now that a huge emphasis is on the Premier League and on the Champions League, but do the domestic cups hold as much weight as they did? Um, Sam? Um, I think it's um, only natural, really, that each team is going to sorry each um, each league or if you like each country is going to hold its own sort of league in higher regard. You always have certain clubs who have got an affinity with certain competitions, i.e. Bayern Munich and AC Milan and what have you with the Champions League or whatever it was called previously, European Cup. Mm-hmm. But but um, 
I don't know, really. Said, I'm 34, so I was sort of growing up around the time of the English band in Europe. Um, I don't think it really holds any sort of sway with me either way, really. I just want Spurs to win the league once in my lifetime. Hmm. Okay. Um, move on. Just comment from John Steggles. Whatever the question is, Sissoko is not, not the answer. Moose says Sissoko. Discuss. Um, I just, I think he needs time. I'm sorry. You know, everybody's saying he's a waste of money and all the rest of it. And, and perhaps I just don't know enough about football um, to know what I'm talking about. But I remember everybody saying exactly the same thing about Eric Lamella. I was one of them. And the only person that I remember being really passionate about Eric was, um, was Greg. And, you know, Greg said, guys, give him time. He's going to come good. And, and look, now we are missing him. We do need him. He is an integral part of our team. Um, and he has come good and he's, he's played well for us. So I just think that every single one of our players, I don't care who they are, they were bought for a reason. Pochettino sees something in them. Him and his team see something in them. That's why they've been bought. So if they're not delivering the goods immediately, you know, is that such a bad thing? I know that we need results immediately from some of these players but as history has shown us some of them need a season or two to get settled in so it's it's a hard one he's building for the future he's he's made that very clear so are we just being a little bit impatient i think unfortunately the price tag has a lot to do with it which isn't his fault i feel probably we did pay a bit over the odds for him but at the same point you know, Pochettino, what he does is he improves players. So give him a length of time with Sissoko and the hope is that he'll continue to do his good work and improve him. Um, he does show flashes of what he can do. He's had the odd bit here and there where he's played well. But yesterday was probably not the sort of game that was really made for him. In the sense that Wickham were never going to give you time on the ball. They were always going to be in your face. It was always going to be a little bit niggly because that's what they had to do is try and get something out of the game. Um, the Premier League, he gets a little bit more time on the ball. Um, he, he can sort of collect his thoughts more and he can be more of an attacking threat. He can sort of see where the space is. Um, so I'd say, yeah, as Nicky said, just give him time. I'm confident Pochettino will uh, work his magic. Um, earlier this season, he was getting a lot of stick from our fans and at the time I was defending him and I, I felt well, look uh, Rizzo Pochettino is, is picking him on a, on a at the time was, was sort of picking him on a regular basis and he must see something in that play he must see something in training and um, uh, he's got some attributes that, that, that are different to say Ericsson or Lamella he's very physical um and you know he's a France international. He, I mean, he was he was one of France's best performers um, in the Euros. Um, and I was quite defensive. Like I, I defended him, and there, there was even a spell of games just before Christmas. I think it might have been Swansea. Possibly he came off the bench, and then Hull or Burnley, or maybe both of those games where, where he, he 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 did okay. Um, yesterday, I was very frustrated with him. First half, I didn't notice he was there at all, couldn't really, I could see what other players were doing, whether they were playing good or indifferent, I just didn't, wasn't aware that he had any presence, and then the second half I think he was better, but he, I think, doesn't help, the, pr the price tag doesn't help, and that's not his fault, and that's, that's just unfortunately, it's just there, and then as fans, fans quickly latch onto that, um, I think also the way that he plays, his style and this isn't a criticism, there are lots of footballers that have been like this. I think he, he looks quite laboured in his movement. You know, if you contrast that to, say, Winks, Winks is very, he's sort of fast, he's sort of very dynamic, and he, he goes, he's hungry, and he's asking for the ball, and um, and Sissoko just comes across as a bit laboured, I find. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that he's a bad player, but he just, it just, it can add to the to the general feeling that well, what does he do, what does he bring to the team I, I was frustrated with him yesterday I'm going to hold my hands up and, and he didn't do it for me yesterday but we've got to give him time You know, he's somebody that's played in the Premier League for a few years um, 
uh, he's a France international, and and Maurizio Bocchettino is, is is a good manager, and and they bought him for a reason. So um, yeah, let let's see how that that unfolds. Um, okay, final two questions. Um, another one from Ed Brad. After the Wiccan game and other cup games, are we now seeing that our reserve players that are basically the same as last season are again not good enough? So. Uh, is our second tier just a little bit short? Yes. Yes, they are. Um, we know this. We saw this in uh, the FL Cup game against Liverpool. The likes of Nkudu and Janssen. You know, he's sort of gone under the radar because he played well yesterday, but he needs to start scoring and not just penalties. Um, the striker will always be judged on his goals. And yes, I know that he did change the shape of the game for us yesterday. But overall, he played quite well yesterday. But I think, unfortunately, at the moment, our second string is a little bit off. You know, Chelsea, I hate to keep comparing to us to them, but yesterday they had Brentford, who were uh, a division below them, granted, but they still worked the floor with them 4 0. Mm. I mean, I didn't see all of the players they had out, but I'd imagine it was probably mostly their second string. You know, if we want to aspire to be challenging for all the trophies, then the second string does need improvement. So, do you think it's the it's the players that we're attracting that we can that we can afford to buy or that we can only um, afford to spend on? That's that's what's falling short, or you know, because they all have talent. Otherwise, we wouldn't be spending money on them. Or, and I don't for one minute think that we're buying players just for the sake of spending money because our money is well spent elsewhere at the moment with the new stadium coming. But is it all that we can attract at the moment because, uh, well, we're Tottenham and other people don't consider us to be a big club? Or, or what is what no, is the major difference I think, between I us and Chelsea? What it is, I think what it is is Chelsea will quite happily go out and buy a player for however many millions and they'll pay him however much he wants to sit on the bench. It makes no sense. Spurs don't do that and I'm quite glad they don't do that because what is the sense in us having a player on 120 grand a week who's going to get paid more than anyone else I don't, I don't know what the top earner at the club earns at the moment but what's the point in disrupting the unity in the squad for the sake of someone like that who's going to potentially play here and there you know at the same point you know I've just said that we do need to improve that doesn't necessarily mean that we need to go out and buy players, you know, the second string that we're playing yesterday, they need to improve. You know, was, mm. I had a conversation with um, with Nick Seal yesterday after the game and we were saying, or he said to me, these players were given a chance today. You know, they can't go in and knock on Pochettino's door on Monday and say, look, why aren't they playing? Can't they? Someone like Carter Vickers, who didn't perform at all, I didn't think, yesterday. You know, there's these second string players, Onima being another case in point, and Kudu, there were several of them yesterday. You know, they've got to learn when you get the chance, you're going to have to take it, particularly mm. in our first team, because you've got to be really, really good to get into that first team. Mm. I think, all right, going back to the question, I, I don't think that the, 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 the I don't think that the, um, the reserve players, if you want to call them that, are, I don't think there is, I don't think they're as bad as the ones we had last season. So that's probably not the best way of putting it. I don't, for example, I don't think someone like Harry Winks, who's sort of on the fringe of the first, you know, he he will, he's come off the bench a few few times in Premier League matches, and I think he started one recently, one or two. Um, He's just just on the border. I think, for example, I think he's better than say Tom Carroll or Ryan Mason. Um, I think that you know last season we didn't have a striker. We've got Janssen. Um, I think um, I think Wanyam is a, a good um, a good addition. I think we've we have got a stronger squad than we had last season. I think that um, if we played. If the, the starting eleven had, if there had been more regulars in the starting eleven yesterday, and I know some of that was because of we've got, we've got um, 
a few players carrying knocks, and we've got Jan injured, so we don't want to maybe risk a few others. And then we've got this game on 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 Tuesday. But if that wasn't the case, and if we if if Pochettino, for example, had played a few more of the regular first team players, and then had played somebody who's not a regular alongside regular first team players, that would have benefited the um, the reserve team, if you want to call it player. Um, we we saw it earlier this season against Gillingham. I think he played. He started with, amongst others, he started with. Ericsson and Lamella, for example, there were there were a few others uh, that, that that were that were, um, that were regulars, but that was say alongside at the time, um, I think Winks and Carroll, or possibly Onoma. So he had those players alongside some of the good players. But if you go for a situation where you just throw in all the reserves players, then it's going to be going back to what we said right at the beginning. It's going to be not going to be easy for them to play together um, if they haven't if they're not used to playing together, but also if you're putting all of your, your, um, I'm really trying to, very close to saying inferior. If you're, if you play your lesser players all, all together at once, that's, that's surely going to have an, have, 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 have an impact. Um, I think they're slightly better. I think some of the players that we've got are slightly better than, than last season. Um, but, hey, yeah, look, as a squad, we can't argue. We know, for example, that Vimmer is better than Fazio. You know, it goes without saying. We're not mm. we're not debating that the squad's improved. The question was about the second string, and that's what needs to improve, in my eyes. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, you contrast you contrast it to Chelsea. If you contrast it to say Liverpool, everybody's going on about Liverpool. They don't look so mm. clever at the moment, going out of two competitions and and fielding. They've had obviously they've had to um, they've had uh, Mane out to the African Nations Cup and they've had Coutinho injured so they've had to field other players and they haven't done as done as well as they perhaps should have so um, yeah I mean for all my comparisons for Chelsea you could have just as easily read Man City or any or yeah. you got backed team from from anywhere you know. The same does apply. You know, a lot of this mentality is if you've got a problem at those clubs, throw money at it. Yeah. Which I don't think is necessarily a healthy thing. I mean, it makes you laugh about this this, uh, FFP. I mean, when's that supposed to kick in? Because I haven't seen it make a blind bit of difference to Man City. The financial fair play thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, The the other thing you mentioned about Chelsea is um, that they also have a hell of a lot of players on loan. Not just players warm, warming up the bench, and I yeah, I think it's about ten thousand at the last game, isn't it? Anyway, um, final question. This is one for Nikki, really. Um, Zach Gasnola asks: Is Onoma, um, Nikki, you mentioned big fan of Josh Onoma, is Onoma a waste of space or a talent that just doesn't fit into our team? Is Nicky prepared to eat mushrooms until he is good? Um, just to remind listeners, back in the very first season of the Tottenham Hotspur Family podcast, um, Nicky, um, Nicky was speaking up for, for, for good old Bobby, Bobby Soldado, uh, Roberto Soldado, and, and he was going through a difficult time. And she said that um, if he... Well, you said that if, if he... If we scored a goal, you would eat a mushroom, and you hate mushrooms um, because mm. they are. I don't like mushrooms either. They're, they're spawn of the they're devil. Disgusting. Yeah, they are disgusting. <laughs> um, and no, uh, it's not this crazy too. would you be <laughs> would you be prepared to um, to eat a mushroom until he's good? Listen, every time I said I would eat mushrooms for Bobby, he scored, and I kept true to my word, and I ate mushrooms. Okay. <laughs> And uh, and I would do the same for Josh, and I would do the same for Janssen because I believe in them. They, I, I do believe that they've got a talent, even if at the moment it's it's so hard because you know that you're good, but you're trying too hard, and and then it just comes across wrong, and stupid things happen as a result of it. So I just think if that over eagerness died down, and I maybe ate some more mushrooms, they would start scoring. So, blame me. It's my fault. <laughs> Next time they play, I will be there. If they if they score, I will eat mushrooms. I think From he's... my lips to their ears. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's... I don't know whether it's... Yeah, it could be over-eagerness or he's just a bit raw. I think he's he's got talent. I don't think he's, he's a bad footballer. Um... 
you know, he's, the reason I say he's got a talent is because I have faith in Pochettino. And Pochettino wouldn't have him there if he didn't think that he was worth something. So I do think that he is a little bit overzealous and, and perhaps that can be to his detriment because he's so eager to prove himself and, and it may not always translate well in the game, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, it's not like he doesn't have the same uh, maturity and mentality of Deli Ali, who came from a different league uh, down. And, and, and look at him, he slotted in perfectly. But there's a maturity about him that, that's, you know, that's Deli Ali. And not everybody can just have that head and shoulders on him when it comes to football. So I think people people would maybe want to aspire to to be like one of the other guys, like Harry. I mean, you know, Harry also did come along and slogged uh, slog around a little bit, but he he came good for us too. So yes, it's it's his second season. Um, he hasn't played regularly. He just needs to also. Pochettino's working with him, and and if he's not going to cut it, then Pochettino will let him go, like with Ryan Mason. He let him go. He's not going to cut it. So at the, at the end of the day, I'm not the pro. Pochettino is. I have faith in him, but I will still eat mushrooms if necessary. So <laughs> hope that answers your question, Zach. <laughs> as much as I hate mushrooms. Even talking about mushrooms, I need to go wash my mouth out with <laughs> a glass of water now. <laughs> The um one of the things one of the good things that um Josh has got going for him at the moment is that he hasn't been loaned out and with the young players um uh Spurs under Pochettino forget about previous managers previous managers for example um when AVB was there when Harry Redknapp was there they would loan out somebody like Harry Kane um not too dissimilar to other clubs they would loan that player out he would go away he would get. Um, some experience of playing, um, albeit lower down, uh, in, lower down in the leagues. But the, he would get game time, and they would then recall him. And if he was good enough, he would he would um, he would uh, feature in, in 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 the first team. Um, if he wasn't good enough, he'd get sold, or they'd loan him out again, um, and then eventually a the, the decision w- w- would be made. With Pochettino, you know, it's completely different. Um, if you're a young player. Um, and he doesn't loan you out. That's a very good sign. So, for example, not this summer, the previous summer, um, there were lots of young players that were still still at sort of academy level, but pushing, knocking on the door. Um, some of whom were loaned out. Winks and who, by the way, Winks is still an academy player. Um, he, he's mm. not. Um, well, he plays in the, in, in the first team. He, he's, he's not treated as such. I, I, I suppose his his pay would be. A lot less. Um, Winks and Onoma were, and also now this season, Edwards weren't loaned out. Mm. They were kept mm. because Pochettino wants to keep a close eye, eye on them. He wants them, Carter Vickers as well this season. He wants to integrate them with the first team um, and with and get all the ideas that he has. Um, uh, get, get get them on on board with those ideas. He wants to mould them. So the fact that Josh Onoma. Um, wasn't loaned out like the previous summer is, is good, and the fact that he's not loaned out at the moment is good as well. But there will come a mm. point in time where, if he doesn't, as you said, Nikki, if he doesn't um, produce the goods, then he will become surplus to requirements, and he will find his opportunities very difficult. And then, as an individual, he'll probably have to make a decision. Um, Josh, this, this, this is, or, or anybody else, do they want to stay at Tottenham? And fight for a place in the team, or do they want to play regular first team football? And as we said with Ryan Mason, he he wanted to. Do. Ryan was slightly older than 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 than, than Josh and, and Harry. Um, he wanted to play first team football, and we allowed him to do that. So I think yeah, Josh is in a good place at the moment, but um, it much will depend on 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 how, on whether he takes his chances. Well, yeah, I think that's and that's with all of them, even even our our second tier. I mean, do they take their chances or don't they? And uh, I think it's 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 hard to 
to sit here and, and maybe judge and criticise because as as fans we want the results, we want to win the league, we want to win games, we want we want the team to be firing on all cylinders. But can you imagine how boring it would be if week in and week out all we did was annihilate teams and there was no challenge? I would be absolutely bored out of my mind. So yeah, sometimes they do give you a little bit of a you know, they make make sure that your ticker is working. And um, and you you you've run through a whole lot of emotions during 95 minutes, but uh, but hey, you know I'd rather have it that way than have boring, predictable football. That's that's part and parcel part. I suppose part and parcel football really. The fact that yeah, you know, a couple of weeks back it was it was fantastic against West Brom, winning four nil. That was that was delightful and and yeah, more often than <laughs> but, Bogey team, they're a yeah. bogey team. M- more often than not, I'd like like us, <laughs> like us, like us to win matches and and win it in that style. But the reality is, every now and then, there's going to be a situation like last week when we're two 0 down against City, and we come back and we show fight and character, and, and or, or yesterday even, um, where it was just it, for the nerves and for the heart, it was it was. It was horrible in some ways, but the the jubilation and the the sheer ecstasy when that fourth goal went in that was just amazing. Um, I, there was a lot just to finish off. I should say there was a lot yesterday on social media, people saying that you know football can be a cruel game and Wickham um, Wickham were very unlucky and maybe they deserved more, and that's true. Um, but you know football for me. Is, yes, it is a cruel, can be a cruel game, but it's also an exciting game. It's also um, it delivers moments of yeah, sadness, joy, ecstasy, all of those emotions and more. And that that's what's so beautiful ab- ab- about football, really. Well, I, well, Jeff, it's interesting because it's. At the, I mean, it's, I don't think it's it's like that just about football. I think it's about any sport. Um, you know, obviously football and, and rugby and whatever, you get your supporters who are passionate about their teams and, and those are group sports. I mean, c- can you imagine how difficult it is for individual sports like tennis and golf, for example? You don't, you know, there they, they are no draws. It's a winner and a loser and that's just what it is. And it's so interesting because today Roger won his 18th major, which is just incredible and in his acceptance speech he said you know in tennis unfortunately you've got a winner and you've got a a loser you he says but today is one of the days where I would have happily been willing to draw this game with Rafa because he played that well and I mean that that for me is good sportsmanship that the emotion of watching the two of them battle it out is as emotional for me as watching the game yesterday, uh, where we we were fighting to win a game against a lower league team to to move on to the next round. It's it's sport. It brings that emotion out of you. It just it unites people. I've said this before. It's it's just such an incredible feeling. And without that emotion, and if you've got a predictable result every week, you will get bored and you won't watch it anymore because you just think, well, why should I bother? Because we know we're going to win. You know, and that's probably maybe how the United fans felt all those years back because every game you you just knew you were going to win. I, I like going into a game wondering, are we going to win or aren't we? Never underestimate your opponent. As Pochettino says, this is football. Anything can happen. <laughs> so that's my rant. Final word. You can't have a podcast without a rant. <laughs> um. <laughs> Right. Uh, oh, well, one one last thing. Um, it's a draw for the FA Cup um, tomorrow for the for, for the fifth round, um, seven twenty UK time. Uh, Any ideas who we might get? Um, we don't know at all. We don't. We don't. We don't know at all. Um, uh, uh, the question is: Do we want a nice, easy home game against somebody on paper that's quite easy, or do we want a difficult? Match. Um, well, that was what yesterday was supposed to be. <laughs> and I've just I've just seen that non League Sutton United have beaten Leeds, so Leeds are out. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. So that's one more sort of potentially big name, if you like, out there. I know they're not in the Premier League, but 
you know, that could have been a potentially tough fixture leads away. <clears throat> That's gone. Okay, so there's there's Sutton and there's Lincoln from the, the sort of lower reaches of of of, of, the, of yeah, Millwall the game. What for today? Millwall, well. and then potentially, if you're talking the bigger boys, then you've got Arsenal, Chelsea, City, United. Still in it? No, they're not ideal world. Arsenal would draw Chelsea. United would draw City. We all know that's not going to happen. Arsenal will get some Sutton at home probably. Yeah, as per normal. And who knows? I mean, I'm starting. To, <coughs> excuse me. I'm starting to get the feeling that we're probably better off with a Premier League team because then, you know, the players know. Have it in their mind it's going to be a tough game. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We know. We know who our opposition are. Mm, interesting one. Okay. Um, the next podcast will be recorded on a uh, day early. It'll be recorded on Saturday. Um, Saturday evening. Um, it will be recorded Saturday evening, probably about nine o'clock um, at night, um, or thereafter. Um, and um, it will be slightly different to some of the other podcasts that we've recorded. This could actually go all wrong, and it, it might not pan out this way. Um, but I'm planning on on as well as recording it on Saturday evening, and and it being available on the usual mediums um, of doing it as a Facebook live. Um, with myself and Merrick, um, who hasn't appeared on the podcast yet this season, um, but that's what we've got lined up for next Saturday. Um, right on that bombshell, um, Nikki. Thank you as ever. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure. Um, and as ever, the future's bright. The future's lily white. Good night. <laughs> in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out over her.